Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some and peace out to the rest of you. Black heart, black mind, black in, again. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Um, I was tempted to crack a few jokes in the beginning of this, but, they, you know, they're not necessary. Uh, I'm just in a bit of a silly mood, but, um, but this is serious, though. I entitled this, uh, The Matrix is Coming for Zion, because, see, I'm not describing Zion as a paradise. Leaving the Matrix, meaning leaving the white Western world, is not a paradise right off the bat, but it is, in fact, an environment that's somewhat natural and survivable. If you survive long enough to observe others um, survive longer, then you can survive even longer. What we're dealing with here is a scenario in which in the matrix, you can't. Your manhood is not allowed to remain intact. If you become the man uh, you're supposed to be financially and, and not relying on others, I don't have to tell you what happens. You were then sexually invalidated, and that's not normal and natural, and it's not okay. You survive it. It's not your fault. But it's not just an okay thing to have happen because, God forbid, no particular man likes a particular woman. She has the right to complain. But you being artificially invalidated because of hybristophilia um, and anti-moral sexual preferences and, and mating standards being programmed into the minds of the daggle is not a valid reason for you to complain as far as the society is concerned. So, no, you don't have to accept it. Shuck that fit. So, um, the other flip side is that you can be the one whose manhood they will validate sexually. But even then, part of that may be on the condition that you are not, financially speaking, the man that you would need to be. Because as BGS has pointed out, one reason they don't like nice guys is because they can't blame them for anything. And I know that firsthand. It, it finally hit me. I am blamed no matter what I do because sisters would not accept to be involved with me if they can't blame me for something. And I behave in a blameless manner as much as possible. In relationships, the one thing I will not be is a patient person. I will be fair. I will be just. I give benefits of the doubt. I give opportunities for people to prove who they are. And I prove uh, that I'm not out to harm anybody. And I'd rather be of a positive benefit, even though that's redundant in saying, than to be of any harm to someone. However, I'm not going to behave in a manner that would give her license to blame me. Do you know what that means in the long run? That means they can't blame me for anything. And that bothers them. Now, I'm talking about in the West. Outside the West, those who get to know me think, oh, you know what, actually, this, this guy's a good catch. And I mean, there are dudes that will say this. If they don't recommend me to the ladies uh, in their family, it's because they don't marry outside their culture. And that does happen in many places, especially where I live. But no, no. When you behave blamelessly, uh, this bothers the Western dagger. What are they going to blame you for, especially sisters? And so therefore, your innocence becomes something that they get used to uh, deriding, even if they want it. So they talk themselves out of even wanting your innocence. And before you know it, that by itself is enough. So by the time she is 16, she's already brainwashed by her friends to be embarrassed by a man that's innocent. By the time she's in her 20s, She's actually convinced to not like it. And if she does still like it, she better hide it. Now, let's get to this, this design in the matrix. When you step out of the matrix, you're not automatically in a paradise, but it's, you can go into some organic environments. However, Botla Dola, one of my subscribers, shout out to him, has pointed out that this stuff is going everywhere. And he's right. To a certain extent, it is. The double standards, the foolishness, the effery, it's going everywhere. Now, he told me about a scenario in which some um, Western Muslims were playing games, and they were various origins. Um, but they were playing games, trying, one of them playing games trying to get at him. 
I'm going to tell you straight uh, that I think that that was actually a combination. I was thinking about it. Was it because they were Western or was it because the parents were not Western? And I think now that I now that I thought about it, it's another one of those cases where it's the combination. It's because they are Western, but their parents are not. So they weren't necessarily socialized for finding who they want of the opposite gender. They were socialized with modesty, but the problem is they were socialized with modesty only and not the counterbalance to it that helps them find the one that they want. So therefore, they've got to play games and do this roundabout stuff to go after the one they want. And so when asked directly, OK, do you want to get to know this man and know more about him? No, I'm not. I'm, uh, are you interested in knowing more about this guy? No. And then going right back to trying to get their friend to go back and get. No, no, no. It's because of both. That's why. The parents are not Western. Educated, maybe, but not Western. They are Western raised, but not necessarily socialized when it comes to that. So on one hand, they're not socialized to be loose thoughts, and that's, that's good. But on the flip side, they're not socialized to see their own interest in a man as a legitimate part of life. So I'm not going to sit up and tell you that when you go everywhere, as soon as you step out the West, everything is hunky dory. I'm telling you that in general, it's been better than in the West. But don't get it twisted. But Ladola's right. He has said that feminism is coming for, the, for Zion. And it is. That matrix crap is coming for Zion. It most certainly is. This is not a joke. It's coming. And I'm telling you. Gentlemen, we have to be more proactive. I've said this before. I'm saying it again for probably my third time. These chat rooms need to find us in there because the feminists are already in there and using Google Translate. They may not be able to spell correctly in English and punctuate correctly in English, which does affect the translation into other languages. Fine. OK, fine and dandy. If you are literate in English or another Western language. And you punctuate, you punctuate then Google Translate can correctly translate most of what you say into another language, into the target language. So go into the chat rooms for people of this and use Google Translate and head off this feminism stuff. But there's more. There's more. When you live outside of the matrix, let the local men know. Because see, sometimes what these ladies might do is they might be feminist for the local men and then turn around and try to be traditional and conservative with you. Let these men know, these ladies here, if you see any feminism, uh, don't reward it. Make them stay by themselves and all of you need to be on code. That attitude needs to result in her being alone because if, if they have options, and I don't mean just alone, I mean it needs to result in them being unpursued. It needs to be a major turnoff because if not, if they just have options, they're going to start opening sex shops. And the artificial version of what God already naturally put on us will have a positive, expensive value. But what God gave to us will carry an even more negative value than what it already does. Now understand, that's how bad it gets. Because I'm going to straight tell you now, any woman that will not pay for sex should not own a sex toy. How many women own some kind of toy? Hmm? Now, how many of these women have ever even so much as paid a T-shirt to a man for a good sexual experience? You get it? Yeah, you see, when a man won't pay a woman, but he does have a toy, God forbid, I still say, yeah, you know what, that's not necessarily hypocrisy. That's safety. Because we already know men's options are limited. We brag, we say we got options, we can do X, Y, and Z. But by default, our options are the ones that are limited, even artificially so. When she won't pay a man for the dingling, but she will pay for a toy, that's hypocrisy. Because she has options. So she'll sit up and say, well, I, don't, I shouldn't have to pay for it. Fair enough. Why do you have a toy? Did you get that for free? Did the toy just follow you home one day? Is that what happened? So shut this feminism stuff down. Tell these men abroad, no, nah, bro, it's, it's you, if it's your sister, if it's your mother, if it's your aunt, get on them about it. 
and, and any other, let them know men ain't going to approach you once they find this out. You don't have options. Make them know that options are dwindling. And when you come across women with that feminism, give them no options. None. All the men need to be on code. Let them know about this. And that's if you already are visiting or you live outside the matrix. Make these cats understand. Now, I would tell these Arabs where I live. The problem is, I don't know the Arabic word for feminism. I'm not sure it's one word. And the other thing, too, is that these cats here, they think that the better ones, especially, they think they know everything. Everything. I mean, they think they're just the smartest in the world. Everybody else is stupid because they're Khaliji. And that, that just means from the Gulf. That's all. And, you know, better ones think they're the best people in the world, even though they're the only ethnicity that Allah ever mentioned outside of Bani Israel. And he disparaged them. When Allah mentioned Rome and Persia in the Quran, he did not necessarily disparage them. He said they were going to be beaten and they wound up beating each other alternate, uh, alternately later on. But when he mentions Bani Israel, the children of Israel, he mentions them disparagingly and he mentions the Bedouins and he mentions them disparagingly and then says there are a few exceptions. Despite that, they think they're the best. That's why I'm not telling them this stuff. Plus, maybe they don't need it. If they're not willing to listen, they need that experience. But where you are in other places where the, where the people in general are nicer to you and friendlier, like in Southeast Asia, in the Philippines, or in Malaysia, or Indonesia, or Cambodia, or Laos, or Thailand, or Vietnam, in these areas, feel free. As best you can in the local language or in English through someone that's bilingual, let these men know. If you are a Spanish speaker and you like to go to Colombia, don't just go chasing them drawers. Hang out with some of the Colombian cats, too, because they don't mind meeting you. Of course, be careful who you first meet. But when you find a trustworthy one through them, meet others and let them cats know. Ask them on the real what's up with the feminism. Some of you hanging out in Brazil, ask them red pill Brazilian men because they got a quite they got quite a red pill community growing. The question is why? Ask them what's happening with it. And then when you get the feed, then when you get their feedback, you let them know this is what's going to happen in, in the future because it's already gotten to that stage in the States. It's the same infection. It's just been, you know, longer, long, longer festering stateside. So this is what's going to come down the pike here. You let them know. And if some of it's already happened, question them critically to see why they would even accept it. Because when certain subconscious things are, are brought into the conscious mind, people don't tolerate that anymore. It's just like the black pride movement in Brazil. Certain ideas that people took for granted about white normality and black uh, mediocrity and, and, and subnormality. Which are really just proper I mean, they're just uh, polite terms for superiority and inferiority are now being brought from the conscious. I'm sorry, from the subconscious mind into the conscious mind. And notice, I didn't say conscience. So if some of you niggas think that I'm saying conscience, subconscious and conscience, you're illiterate. Conscious and conscience are two different words, two different spellings. For some of you that don't think literacy is important. You bring certain things from the subconscious mind to the conscious mind and, and, and people don't tolerate it anymore. You start questioning certain things. Why would you straighten your hair and they don't curl theirs? Why would you use skin bleach and they won't lay out in the sun? Or even if they do lay out in the sun for that matter. Why would you do things to imitate them they would never do to even so much as validate you? Why? Why are you not considered mentally ill when you imitate them and one of them that takes melanin tablets or injections to look more like one of us is mentally ill? I mean, maybe both are mentally ill. But at least one of them has a sympathy with the oppressed and not with the oppressor. I'm talking about Martina Big, the German lady that's going through operations and injections to, to become African. Her mental illness, if she has it, does not compare to the mental illness of those who use skin bleach and try to imitate Caucasians when they're not. Because we're imitating the oppressors of the planet. The colonizer, the demons. She's not. She 
coming from the same ethnicity saying, I'm, I'm not going to accept that per se. She's pretty much saying that because we did not commit oppression and colonization and enslavement and everything, every other crime against humanity under the sun, we're better than her people are. At the very least, she has her morality intact. That's more than I can say for a lot of us. It's the same thing when it comes to this feminism. Go into these areas and find out, talk to these cats and say, hey, man, yo, look, I need to know something, bro. What's happening with it so far? Which stages has it gotten to here? Then I'll tell you what's coming down the pike later. We need to let them know about this. So that they can head it off where it is now and make sure that it doesn't get rewarded. Right off the bat. And also let these cats understand. See, hypergamy may not be translated into Portuguese yet or Spanish. Or Laotian or Cambodian or Thai or Vietnamese or Bahasa Malayu, or Tagalog, or Cebuano, or Waraye, or Visayas. It may not be translated into these things, but whatever the case is, the tendency for women to date and marry across or up, usually up, what we call hypergamy in English, needs to be pointed out, and we need to tell these men, if she's going to be a feminist, she needs to drop this hypergamy, and she needs to pay the cost to be the boss. As, as soon as she won't pay the cost, she's hypergamous. She can't be a feminist anymore. Make them choose. Make them choose early, because our mistake in the West, back in the Matrix, is that we did not make them choose. They climbed up, and then insisted that we still be above them. And we tried to do both. We tried to elevate them and then try to be and then try to elevate ourselves to their new standards. And we you can't do you can't do both. You can't be above and beneath them at the same time. And whichever one they found, they were unhappy with it. And, and that was our mistake. Let them know. Head this stuff off at the pass. But Ladola's warning is correct. The Matrix is is coming for the Zions to which we'd like to travel for whatever reason. Don't let them ruin these areas. It's not a competition. When you go there, you are not in competition with the local men. Not at all. So make these men understand, the local men, make them understand that they ain't got to tolerate this stuff. Because if the, women, if the women do view you as better than them or they pretend to do so, whatever the case is, if they, if they think for whatever reason that you will not tolerate what the local men won't tolerate and the local men ain't going to tolerate their feminism, then it's already a win-win scenario for you. By looking out for the other men, you already are winning. That's it. That's what we need to understand. Because these women that don't like each other and can't stand each other do have one thing in common. They don't necessarily look out for each other to a certain extent or, or, or maintain a code because they even love each other. They don't do it. They maintain a code just to make sure that there's a minimal amount of, a high minimum of stress through which we go through to get to them. Just for that purpose alone, for no reason other than that, just to make sure that that, that funky fish that a lot of them are carrying around is overpriced and overvalued. For no reason other than that. That being said, thank you for listening. Black heart, black mind, black out. Asalaamu Alaikum. And black, heterosexual, non-select male power just because they don't like it.